This is a simple paramecium, commonly found in standing water after a rain or in most ponds and lakes. Magnification is at 100x. Notice the rupture point on the organism and immediate disintegration of the organism's entire structure. Please note the digital real-time readout in hours, minutes, and seconds at the lower right-hand corner of the screen. This will give you some idea as to how long it takes for an organism to disrupt. Spinning action is normal until the pulsations disrupt the body membrane, causing an instant venting of matter. Many people have heard of the medical technique of using ultrasonic waves to break kidney stones into pieces so that no operation is necessary to remove them. One of the best kept secrets, however, is that any particle can be selectively targeted and destroyed with pulsed modulation. Again, the microbe is disrupted within a few seconds, followed by the spilling of internal matter. This process is similar to an earthquake shaking a building to rubble. You will note that the targeted organism is destroyed without affecting any of the surrounding untargeted material. In the 1920s and 1930s, Royal R. Wright, a scientist in San Diego, California, discovered and researched the methods by which bacteria, fungi, and viruses could be destroyed with waves that are harmless to the human body. The experiments shown here were conducted by the Dallas Rife Research Group on non-pathogenic microorganisms to demonstrate the validity of Rife's principles. Two paramecium are in close proximity to each other in this example. You will note that the lower paramecium dissolves first under the influence of the modulated pulsations. The second paramecium follows suit shortly. Numerous studies by the Dallas Rife Research Group have shown that all targeted microorganisms on a single test slide disintegrate when exposed to specific pulsed modulations, leaving the test slide completely clear of the targeted species without disrupting any untargeted species. This is a prototype ray tube mock-up built by the Dallas Rife Research Group showing the various components and test equipment necessary for properly monitoring the system. Here a Macintosh computer is being used to generate precisely modulated pulsations. The primary ray tube is shown here on an adjustable boom arm. Here another prototype tube in an alternate configuration is shown in the pulse mode. Precision electronic amplifiers, counters, oscilloscopes, and pulse modification equipment form the nucleus of the system. A precision laboratory microscope was used to view the microorganisms. The experiments were documented by attaching a video camera to one of the microscope oculars and then viewing them on a color monitor. This handheld prototype tube was used to disrupt microorganisms by placing it in close proximity 
to the slide containing the subjects. This flashing blue light emanating from the handheld tube demonstrates the modulation effect. Notice the oscilloscope waveform tracing behind the light, indicating the changing modulations that are being generated by the computer. The advantage of a handheld ray tube is demonstrated here. By being mobile, the rays can be used to irradiate specific areas for sterilization. A typical application would be in a surgical scrub-up room where the surgeon's hands, arms, and entire body would be bathed in the rays. The penetration factor into the body is around three inches. The surgery room, instruments, monitors, tables, walls, and the patient could be treated with the rays. Now we see the large ray tube being moved about as it modulates the waveforms. Notice that the large ray tube head is not as bright as the handheld tube. However, the larger capacity ray tube head is capable of producing up to a thousand watts of output. The ray tube is shown here with its modulated beam, similar in design to Rife's large round ray tube shown here. Rife's output system, shown in the background, caused the modulated output of the ray tube to create a small flash. This instantly sterilized all of the surfaces in the room. This is another view of Rife's ray tube instrument. The ray tube is shown here in the dark. The current ray tube design is shown modulating the same type of pulsations that Rife used. Rife documented all of his research with film. He used the Abrams oscillator shown here to modulate the pulsations. This lab film of Rife's original oscilloscope tracings graphically demonstrates the pulsations which disrupted the microorganisms. As you know, adequate funding is vital in order to reestablish the critical modulations necessary to disrupt the intended microorganisms. The following culture studies were provided courtesy of Intertron Incorporated. On August 25, 1989, agar petri dishes were streaked with various cultures of bacteria. Half of the surface area was foil shielded, then the cultures were irradiated with modulated ultraviolet light. Approximately 16 hours later, the petri dishes were examined by the lab supervisor. Virtually no growth of staphylococcus was shown in the area exposed to the irradiation. Here we find Staph aureus approximately 16 hours after radiation. Very little growth is indicated in the exposed areas. Close up, a clear delineation is shown between the area that was irradiated and the area that was shielded. These petri dishes, streaked with E. coli and checked after approximately 16 hours, show virtually no growth after irradiation. Clear delineation is evident between the irradiated and non-irradiated areas. These are the same Staphylococcus cultures approximately four days after having one half of the dish irradiated, showing heavier growth of the bacteria in shielded areas and a slight growth beginning in the irradiated areas. Here we find E. coli on the left, Pseudomonas on the right four days after irradiation. Heavier growth is evident in the shielded areas and only slight growth in the irradiated areas. These are the control dishes showing normal bacteria growth with no exposure to irradiation. The top halves of these culture plates were streaked and left to grow for 24 hours, at which time the bottom halves were streaked, showing a 24-hour growth difference in the unirradiated control standards. All of the previously shown sterilization techniques were originally discovered by Royal R. Rife, shown here in his lab in 1970. In the late 1920s and early 30s, when most of Rife's research was being done, Rife was worked with closely by a veritable who's who of the medical industry, shown here at a banquet in his honor.
The story of Rife's universal microscope and his amazing sterilization discoveries were published in detail by Seidel and Winter in the annual report of the Board of Regents of the Smithsonian Institution of 1944. This document, Smithsonian Institution Publication Number 3776, which was published by the United States Government Printing Office, states, under the universal microscope, disease organisms such as those of tuberculosis, cancer, sarcoma, streptococcus, typhoid, staphylococcus, leprosy, hoof and mouth disease, and others may be observed to succumb when exposed to certain lethal frequencies coordinated with the particular frequencies peculiar to each individual organism and directed upon them by rays covering a wide range of waves. With proper funding for research and development and the right team of knowledgeable researchers, this technology can be re-verified, reintroduced, and liberated from the forgotten past.